What's going on, everybody? It's your buddy. It's your pal, Spaz Phoenix, the YWC Reality Check, and you don't see my pretty sexy face, so you know I'm not alone. Kristen, say what's up. What's up, everyone? And, uh, yeah, we're doing this a day late. We're here to talk about the TLC pay-per-view. Woo! That's my fault that we're doing it a day late. Yeah. Are we super excited about the show? I am. It's not going to sound like I am, but I actually, you know, am excited for parts of it. This is, we're, I think we just said just before we came on the air, this is going to be like the minimum effort podcast. Minimum effort! Anyways, uh, unfortunately we don't have Guapo. Apparently some other jobber fed is having a pay-per-view tonight, so we lost Guapo, and that's unfortunate. But if you're listening and if you're familiar with us, you should go follow Guapo on Twitter, Guapo underscore 504, and uh, yell at him for not joining us, I guess. Um, yes, go yell at him. Talking about TLC, before we came online, I think I ran the idea by you very quickly. This is a really cool pay-per-view that a lot of TV has gotten in the way of. Fair to say? Yep. A lot of... There uh, have been some bad Raw. I'm sure you all know. You don't need me to tell you that, but I will reiterate, there have been some bad Raws lately. Um... Something that's going to be a noticeable trend uh, in this show that has been a noticeable trend in the past couple of videos like this that we've done. You guys know I follow a lot of what culture, and I uh, I agree with a lot of what they say. So I will try to give them credit when I'm blatantly repeating ideas that I've heard from them or other people. But basically the idea is, you know, we get through a lot of shitty TV, and uh, you get a bunch of things that even on paper are good. There's things on this sh- this show that don't make any sense. There's things yep. on this show that I shouldn't be uh, excited about. There's things that I'm just morbidly curious about. But, I mean, there's 12 matches on this card. And this is the, the December pay-per-view where, like, we're in the height of the WWE sort of slump before um, before Royal Rumble, before Mania season kicks in, before all the excitement. So, like, this is the, like... I don't, even, I don't even want to say the calm before the storm, because that sounds optimistic, but this is, like, where everybody theoretically doesn't really care. And we've managed to put together a 12-match card, even though I can think of about five people that are off injured, from, from obviously, Roman Reigns, who's dealing with the leukemia that you and I did a video on at the time. Um, you know, Alexa Bliss can't wrestle. She's got concussion issues uh we're still missing Sami Zayn. we're still missing kevin owens uh and there are people on this pay-per-view that may not be at this pay-per-view and that's true too and we're gonna we're gonna deal with that as we go but even if even putting that aside you've got entire titles that are not being represented on this show you've got the raw smackdown or sorry the raw tag team titles which is bobby Roode and chad gable which is Interesting, if nothing else, you know, Drake Maverick has this thing about peeing on stuff now, which is awesome, I suppose. you got the United States champion, Shinsuke Nakamura, who apparently just doesn't matter. Uh, Brock, Le- You said it before we came online, Brock Lesnar's not on this show. Let's take a moment and be surprised. There we go. But I mean, if you look at some I of the... Just, pe- I just realized, Raw doesn't have their main big title... Uh, ever and SmackDown doesn't have their mid card title ever. And they only showed up at the last pay per view because it was all the champions versus all the champions. But even if you, even if you take that aside, take out all the people that are sick, take out all the titles that are not being represented, take out all the people that are injured. Look at the people that are fully healthy that are not on this show. Shinsuke Nakamura is not on this show. Jeff Hardy's not on this show. Samoa Joe's not on this show. Rusev's not on this show. Uh, the Miz isn't on this show. His supposed new tag team partner, Shane McMahon, is not on this. There's a lot. Sasha Banks and Bailey are not on this show. Um, take out all the injuries, all the sickness, all the championships not being represented, all the people that are left off this card. You've still got 12 matches, and I give a shit about most of them. There's one on here that I would actually say take it off because I absolutely don't care but think about all the people not on this show you could build a decent pay-per-view just with the people not on this show yeah pretty much Brock Lesnar versus The Miz 2019 it'll happen anyways um (laughs) I think you're crazy I, I I think I'm really really kidding um 
So if we're going to start at the bottom, we're going to start with the absolute dregs. We are going to talk about a tournament that I have not watched a single episode of, and that is the second season of the Mix Match Challenge, which is actually having its final on the pay-per-view. Carmella and R-Truth versus Jinder Mahal and Alicia Fox. First of all, thoughts. Can we all agree? Can we all agree that uh, even I've, I've, I've watched some of it. Can we all agree that the only reason these two teams are in the finals is because there have been so many fucking injuries on on the male side? Is this the only? Are these the only two teams that are still the original teams that they were when they started? Um, uh, yeah, I think I think so. Because the, um, I mean, I don't care that it's, I don't, wa- I don't watch it, but it doesn't bother me that it's happening. It's, it's like 205 Live. I don't catch it as much anymore, but like, it's cool to kind of know that it's out there. But I mean, you get some things out of this. I mean, they weren't using Jinder Mahal and they weren't using Alicia Fox. So putting them together along with the Singh brothers, it's kind of like a bottom of the card sort of like, eh, they're doing something. They're all kind of weirdos and they're all kind of just just there. Uh, They make a weird little unit on Raw that I could do without. SmackDown, on the other side, it's it's a really, really interesting thing because we all hated Carmella when they pushed her too far, when they made her the champion way too quickly, um, when the story was Charlotte Nosca and Carmella didn't belong there and they were trying to make her this really sort of intensely hated heel. But they pulled her out of the main event, they pulled her out of the title picture, they turned her face and they just made her a bit of fun, and it gave our truth something to do. And I don't mind their 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 shtick right now. I think it's a lot of fun coming in the whole dance break thing. You know, it's the extension of our truths. You know, oh my bad, I didn't know I wasn't supposed to be here. Like, it doesn't hurt my feelings at all. No. Like, it's a bit of fun. It's and, something for them to do. And it's something for them to do, but also like it's like the mix match challenge as well because it's a lot of unscripted from the little like clips that i've seen it has a very much a house show very light sort of outside of the regular bubble feel to it so why not is how i look at it but the the added little asterisk that they've put in this time around is that the winning team get to get to be the number 30 spots in their respective royal rumbles which is the main reason I'm picking Carmella and R Truth at one, because I want there to because R Truth is always in the wrong place at the wrong time. I want us to be at the at the women's Royal Rumble number thirty spot, and he comes out by accident and has one of his like oh my bad, and then like fucks off moments. I think it would be it would be a decent little is comedy. That, is that what the what they get for the mix max challenge? Uh, yeah, they get the, uh, the. I hadn't heard that. They get the number thirty spots in the two respective rumbles, and like storyline wise, WWE is going to send them on a vacation of their choosing, which is, which is a dumb thing. But the Royal Rumble, th- everybody's everybody's kind of ticked off, or everybody that I've heard is kind of ticked off because you know the who who's going to be the number thirty is supposed to be one of like the mysteries of the Rumble. But I mean, they did Roman a couple years ago. They did Ziggler last year, which made no sense. I was about to say the last couple of years hasn't really been that much of a mystery. It hasn't been. I I understand the people that hearken back to the days and say that it should be. But if it's not going to be, this is, you know, it's not a bad prize, because it doesn't necessarily, like, do I think R-Truth or Carmella are figuring into title pitch at WrestleMania? Absolutely not. So you're going to have a fucking dance break towards the end of the Rumble when everybody's kind of tired and just needs something that's light, like some light fluff. And uh, and I, I, don't, I don't think they're giving anything to gender right now. Uh, as much as I think Alicia Fox is a little overlooked, I don't think they're giving anything to her either. Um, I, I also have R-Truth and Carmella. Um, before I tell you my number, I would like to tell uh, the fans that, uh, my numbers are just fucking, I'm just throwing shit against the wall here, guys. I don't really, it really is not a very good representation on how sure I am about a match. What's your number? Uh, Because I have them at seven. Okay. Fair enough. Um, mostly, mostly because I feel like 
especially on SmackDown, Carmella and R Truth have been getting a lot more TV time, and it looks like they're getting like I wouldn't say a push, but they are visible. They're they're entertaining. They're they're a breather between a, heavy yes. heavier things. Yes, and so and like I said, I wouldn't call that a push, but I see them more visibly than I do. Uh, Gender and Alicia Fox on Raw. Right. Gender, Gender and Alicia Fox on Raw have only been on Raw to remind people about the Mixed Match Challenge. And that's it. And and even very sparsely. Like, they haven't right. been on Raw a lot. Well, they, they, like they've they been out there and... to, fi- to face Ember Moon so that the Raw announcers could say, well, so-and-so's been injured. Ember Moon's new partner is so-and-so. Um... As you said, it's sort of been dogged by uh, switch ups and switch outs and whatever. So there are people that have been stuck in the tournament at a higher place that they didn't earn because somebody else that are in that spot is now out. Anyways, I uh, forgot to mention this beforehand. Uh, for anybody listening for the first time, if you don't really know what we're doing numbers wise or whatever, basically this is what we call the pay per view pick 'em. Uh, you take all your predictions in this case there's 12 matches so there's 12 predictions you rank those predictions in order of confidence obviously 12 being your most confident and one being your least confident throw it down in the box below follow me on twitter on the night i'm hoping to be home during the show it might not happen but um there's no prizes this is just for fun if you want to follow along do it if you don't want to don't uh if you've got some random thoughts about the show you want to share please throw it down in the box below and I'm going to take a minute just to thank everybody that has played along with us this year. I, I like to think that since we've instituted the uh, the contest portion of these videos, I've had a lot of fun. Uh, Guapo's not with us tonight, but um, he's been part of that fun. Kristen, you've been part of that fun as well, so thank you for that. In and, fact, anybody new can can see the the uh, rivalry between uh, Ms. Art 10 and myself where we, you know, on a semi-regular basis, shit-talk each other. It, uh, actually, we you know have, what? We have our own feud going. It's crazy. I, w- I was just going to say, in recognition of those that have decided to join us for the game this year, I want to send a shout-out to all our winners from this year. NXT TakeOver Philadelphia went to Strife 19. Royal Rumble went to Mizark 10. Elimination Chamber went to Mizark 10 for his second win. Fastlane went to Train Holland. Uh, TakeOver New Orleans went to Mizark 10 for his third win. <laughs> WrestleMania 34 went to Matt D. Uh, you'll, no- you'll notice he hasn't said my name or Guapo's name or himself. I, I'm, about, I'm about to say your name because you took, you took Backlash. Uh, TakeOver Chicago 2 was a three-way tie between Guapo, yourself, for the second win, Mizark 10 for his fourth win, Money in the Bank went to Melvin World Entertainment, Extreme Rules went to Strife 19 for his second win, TakeOver Brooklyn 4 went to Guapo for his second win, SummerSlam went to Mizark 10 for his fifth win, Hell in the Cell went to Mizark 10 for his sixth win, Evolution... I'm just saying... Ms. Arctin is cheating. <laughs> Evolution. I haven't figured it out yet, but he is. Evolution went to our boy Guapo for his third win. War Games went, to, uh, sorry, War Games 2 went to Ms. Arctin for his seventh win. And Survivor Series went to Ms. Arctin for his eighth win. So, um, you lost to, <laughs> to Ms. Arctin in this, in this grand rivalry. But, uh, I'm just saying... He's cheating, and I will figure it out. I just haven't yet. <laughs> Anyways, in all seriousness, to all of you guys that have taken this this wacky idea that we've had and uh, joined in on the fun, uh, it really is a lot of fun. I've said this, I say this a lot about the uh, when we do the Q and As and such. Like, there's certain things that I can't do here uh, if you guys don't join in and participate. So, thank you. Hope you guys join us more next year. Q and As there if you want to put one in for the Rumble Q and A, uh, and. Yeah, Mizark 10, uh, whether or not you win this one, which you probably will, uh, you did win for the year. So a preemptive congratulations to you for that, sir. And a preemptive go fuck yourself. I mean, wow. congratulations. Wow. wow. Shots fired. I'm Shots kidding. fired. I'm kidding. Okay. Slightly. Okay. Okay, you, go, you, you were kidding. Let's go to something that's not so funny. See that transition I did there? See how smooth that was? Yeah. Tables match. 
Ruby Riot versus Natalia. Which is entirely based on Natalia's dead father, Jim the Anvil Nightheart. This, uh, they've talked about this on What Culture. Yeah, they did. It's one of, this is one of the two feuds that if, you know, if everyone signed off on it, then then that's cool and, and everything is kosher. But as a fan, not know, and I'm sure everybody is signing off on it because, uh, actually, I'm not sure of that at all because WWE can be assholes sometimes. It just has that grimy feeling of, uh, I don't feel like I should, like, like, this feels dirty is what it feels like. I mean, you know how I've, I think about these. I, I'm very, I'm very slow to put out any form of censorship. Like, there's nothing, there's not a whole lot out there that's a bad idea. Like, if it makes some, if a story like this makes you feel uncomfortable, it's it's supposed to make you feel uncomfortable. I just think both of them deserve a better story. I'm not saying the story is wrong. I'm just saying it's it's bad. Uh, I'm a huge fan of Ruby Riot. Anybody that saw a lot of what Ruby Riot and Nikki Cross and Oscar were doing in NXT, I mean, yes, that's a cliche thing to say. I think Ruby Riot is incredibly underappreciated as a wrestler. Uh, the one title shot she had against Charlotte last year uh, before coming over to Raw, we'll we'll show you that. And Natalia, Natalia is a, a mechanic in the ring. I don't think she's ever really going to be on the top of the division. Um, but I think she's got that spot where she's like a proving ground wrestler for people that are about to be in that title picture. And I want this to be that. I want Ruby Riot to, to beat her, to have that, that, that moment in a better way to, uh, to move on to what I think she can do. Um, you know, when you, when you, when you throw in like the dead relatives cliche, and we're going to get into how other things are using the Roman story later on, because that's, that's weird too. But because of that, it's one of those things where if Natalia gets her comeuppance, it's less distasteful. So I got Natalia winning it too, even though I want this to be a story where Ruby Riot could win. Also, um, with the stories about all the illnesses and whatnot that are going around WWE this year, I mean, uh, Balor has been sick. Um, I think they rhymed off a couple of other people that have been dealing with illness. One of the people there uh, that is supposedly dealing with this sickness is Mandy Rose. Or, sorry, not Mandy Rose. Liv, um, Liv, Liv Mo- Morgan. Liv Morgan. I think it's Mandy Rose on the other side as well. But yeah. uh, Liv Morgan as well. So Ruby Riot may only have one of her helpers instead of two. I mean, you might stick an extra baby face in Natalia's corner to sort of quote-unquote even the odds because it's a no-DQ match. I got Natalia at two only because that's how these stories usually go. Uh, I also, I have Natalia at three because I, uh, I think you should also explain, uh, real quick for the, for the matches that I, I saved my two low numbers for, uh, the matches that may not happen tonight. Yeah, we did kind of, uh, we did so kind of have, have we, at three. we did kind of have to decide that, um, Rumors uh, speculating around whether or not the Braun Strowman match will actually happen. Rumors speculating around whether Finn Balor is actually going to be around for his match with Drew McIntyre. At this point, at the point of recording right now, those matches both are still on. What is going to happen if those matches don't happen? Nobody's getting those points anywhere around the bend. Um, if somebody is replaced, uh, like we saw at last year's TLC where they brought in AJ Styles at the last minute to fight Finn Balor and all that, and I tried to make it work with the scoring structure, this time around, if somebody is pulled due to injury, due to illness, due to whatever, and it becomes a different match, those matches are not, for, uh, unfortunately, going to count for this round of the pay-per-view pick em. That will just be a zero across the board because it's not the matches we're actually talking about. Um... I know that's not what we did last year, but after a little bit of thinking and a lot of WWE, just this rotating door of injuries and badness that they have, um, I figured this was the, the safest and fairest way for all all the participants. So keep that in mind when you're doing your scores. If you put a high number on a match that might not happen, you may lose that many points. Speaking of... Speaking of the people, the matches that might not happen, 
Drew McIntyre versus Finn Balor in one of the only regular matches on the card. Uh, it's also one of the matches that I was kind of looking forward to. Yeah. Um, I want to go ahead and spoil my pick. I had Drew McIntyre winning at one, and that isn't even because, like, I feel like because they are trying to push Drew McIntyre hard right now, that him losing to Finn Balor wouldn't have looked great, wouldn't have, wouldn't have, would have hurt him. And it wouldn't have helped Finn all that much to beat Drew McIntyre, but it would have hurt Drew McIntyre a lot. And his momentum going forward, uh, I have him, I have Drew McIntyre winning at one, but I also think that uh, this match may not happen. This yeah. version of the match may not happen. Yeah. I've heard that he he's not injured. He has an illness of some kind. Yeah, they um, they took a beat down from two weeks ago on Raw and used that as the injury story. I think it's just again, it's the whatever it is, some sort of like massive flu. Like, like last year, it was the mumps. Um, this year, it's some other sort of, as they say, undisclosed illness that's that's hit a bunch of people. I made my picks before any of this was announced, and I just haven't changed anything. I've got Drew at seven. I got I kind of got to disagree with you that because of how under pushed Finn is, if he gets a win over somebody like Drew McIntyre on a, on a show like this, where sort of nobody really expects it, I think it could be a cool thing. But it'll be a case of we'll get to the next night on Raw, and he'll be back to like mid card Finn, and everybody will be pissed all over again. Plus. Uh, I- I think the one way that Finn would win is if uh, Dolph Ziggler got involved. Yeah. Which would spark a feud between, a more of a feud between uh, McIntyre and Ziggler. Yeah. But like I said, I saved my... Uh, I do I do have a theory about that that ties into something we're going to talk about later on, but... Um... I, I don't I don't think you're wrong. Ziggler is another one of those people, along with, like I say, Joe, Miz, Jeff Hardy, Nakamura, Rusev, um, that's just not on the show. That these are the guys that are making the few good things on main roster TV good, and none of them are on the show. So Ziggler, I think, very conspicuous by his absence. But I have a theory um, that's going to come into play later on. Next one is for the Cruiserweight title, and I haven't really been watching 205 Live. I'll put my hand on my heart and admit that. It's a rematch from the Super Show in Australia, which was fucking insane, the reception Buddy Murphy got in Australia. Buddy Murphy, Cedric Alexander, you can't go wrong putting these guys in the ring. If they relegate these guys to the pre-show, they're absolute morons. I got Cedric getting his title back at five. Uh, I have Murphy keeping his title at six, just because I feel like they are uh, they're pushing him. And um, well, I've I've heard rumors that I don't know if two hundred five has long to live. Yeah, basically. Which sucks in a way because you figure canceling that show is sort of them losing faith in those stars, but at the same time. Uh, we, we were talking about it earlier, the fact that they are slowly integrating the 205 stars into the main roster. Um, I have my opinions on what they're doing with Daniel Bryan right now, but Daniel Bryan versus Mustafa Ali on SmackDown this week was a nice little surprise out of nowhere. Um, Leo Rush is in a manager role, but we, we finally got to see him in action on Raw against Elias. That was good. Drake Maverick, unfortunately, isn't being used as a wrestler, so he's not fighting as a wrestler. But, um, I mean, if this leads us to, like, I don't know, Cedric Alexander versus Finn Balor or Mustafa Ali versus Seth Rollins or some shit like that, I, I will take losing 205 Live, a show that I don't, really even watch on the regular if it means that that title is going to get main roster appreciation and those title contenders are going to get more spotlight on the main show i mean also you got lucha house party who are great on the main roster but the house party rules thing is is garbage and they're burying the revival next next uh i'll let you say some I'll let you talk about this if you want to. I don't really have anything to say. Randy Orton versus Rey Mysterio in a chairs match. 
I don't have much to say about this either. And I got uh, Mysterio at three. I have Mysterio at nine. Again, my numbers are going to be whacked out and all over the place today, guys. I think it's um, it's kind of cool I in a way that like it... they've really they've really put Orton up as this guy that likes to like torture people. I mean, we all remember my boy Jeff Hardy getting his ear played with and and whatnot and what they did what he did with Ty Dillinger's fingers in the turnbuckle bolts and shit like that. So I think it's just Mysterio's established, Orton's established, Mysterio is loved, Orton is hated. They can just throw these guys well, on a I card. Think, I also think this is a way to I mean, Mysterio's been off the off the show for off, out of WWE for a little while. Mm. I think this feud was meant to be like let's get him get him back get him a feud, get him back to where people know who he is again. I mean the older fans are gonna know, but maybe younger fans are not gonna know. He's been gone for a little while. Mm. Uh get him back in the thing. Uh I think he's gonna win just because uh, I feel like this was a short feud just to kinda get him back in the public eye before they move him on to something else. Do you think they should have him working with the two oh five guys? Um I mean I feel like I'm trying to put words together. Uh, not Guapo. Uh, Monoxide put this in maybe the best way that I hadn't thought about it in a while until he said it, and now I can't unhear it. So hopefully there's no glass-shattering moment where now you guys can't unthink this. It's hard for me to... See Rey Mysterio being in this in this 205 uh, live, which is the cruiserweight division, which has this weight limit. When we've seen him win the heavyweight title, and see, I look at the other way. I look at it the other way around. I look at the absolute ludicrousness of him winning anything called the heavyweight title. Exactly. Because, like if he won the WWE championship. And this is me being really nitpicky, guys, and I'll say that in advance. If he won the WWE title, I would have no problem with that. Because you had guys like Shawn Michaels come along, Bret Hart come along, CM Punk come along, Daniel Bryan come along, and prove that the smaller guys can win it. And that's not my problem. I'm not picking on him because he's small. I'm picking on the fact that they, they book him as, and they said it, they drove it into the ground for the longest time. He's the, the smallest dog with the biggest heart, or whatever the fuck it was. And then literally give him the heavyweight title. Um, if it was the other way around, if it was the WWE title, I absolutely wouldn't have minded. I still say, and I do not in any way mean this in a, in a degrading fashion, he was better in WCW because he knew what he was. He was that division. Like, he represented that division. Um, picture AJ Styles in his prime X Division champion like era where he basically like other people could have the title but he still owned the division Rey Mysterio was that it's like uh when you see certain guys that we call like the king of the mid card like um Kofi Kingston was like that for a while Dolph Z Ziggler is sort of a gatekeeper of the of the mid card division uh, Rey Mysterio could be that for the Cruiserweight cha uh, Championship in this era as well. I don't think you make him a mainstay in the main event picture at this point. But, no. But he's one of the ones that is able. He's one of the big enough names that's actually able to go into like the 205 Live division without people laughing at it. Um and And give the rub to those guys specifically. And I think if they don't at least experiment with that at some point i think they're missing a huge opportunity because what other name what other uh personality that's as big as ray mysterio's is can go to 205 live the... like finn balor could but everybody would riot <laughs> yeah like everybody would riot uh i also have to say daniel bryan on smackdown calling mustafa ali little man as he's looking up at him this, this is true was quite class smacking him because he drives an suv anyways i'll get to my issues with we'll daniel get bryan. to the daniel bryan gimmick later okay Here's where we go, and you actually asked me about this as we, as you were putting your picks together, because I sent you the the uh, 
the card. And then I wrote Elias versus Lashley in a ladder match. Dot, dot, dot. Kinda. Kinda. <laughs> now, this is one of these ones where I am fully going to defer to the guys in what culture. First of all, this isn't a proper ladder match. It's not. Uh, you're climbing up the ladder to get the guitar. When you get the guitar, you don't win. If you, you can use the guitar once you have the guitar. When you use the guitar, you don't win. You're winning by pinfall. So it's so not it's like it, it, it's a it's a it's a no disqualification or hardcore match, but you have to like climb up a ladder to go get the weapon that you. It, it, it's basically the Vince Russo fill in the blank on a pole match. Yeah, but, but instead it's in the middle of the ring. But I have but here's where I'll give credit to. I don't care about the match for. I mean, love Elias, love love what Elias does. He's going to factor into my theory for later on as well. Love what Elias does. Couldn't give a crap about Bobby Lashley. The best thing about Bobby Lashley is his manager. So he's suffering from Blake and Murphy syndrome. Um, but the, but it's the logic of this, and I didn't think about it until until the What Culture guys said it. It's a ladder match. You're climbing a ladder to get the weapon. The thing you're climbing to get the weapon is a better weapon than the weapon you're going to get. I'm sorry, stupid little, like, break-apart balsa wood guitar versus steel ladder to the face. Why would you use the ladder to climb the ladder to get the guitar when you can just use the ladder? It's a very simplistic way to say it, but at the same time, it's such a plot hole. Like, it's kind of like what you said about Mysterio. It's like, once you hear that plot hole, you can't ignore it. And, and you know what they could have had instead of this? Because, you know, they probably were like, well, we need a ladder match. You know what they could have done? I don't know. Give Shinsuke Nakamura a ladder match since he has a fucking title yeah. that you could put up on top of the ladder. Yeah, but his contender right now is Rusev. And, I mean, we don't want to actually go and do something silly like give Rusev a push. I'm just saying if you wanted to have a ladder match, there's somebody with a fucking title. That you can yep. put no, on I get top it. of a ladder. So you miss out on a good ladder match, and you miss out on a title match. But you want to hear how bad the Rusev push is? What was Rusev's yeah. last feud? I don't even remember. It was what Aiden... was Rusev's last feud? It was Aiden English. Oh, that is sad. Why'd you make me sad? Why'd you make me think <laughs> but here's, that? But here's the thing, though. What's an Aiden English? <laughs> yeah, basically. What uh, what is that? What are you telling me? What are an Aiden English? I don't understand. What are what are what are Aiden English? I uh, I don't know. I don't think there's going to be a clean win here, but I do think Elias wins. I've got Elias at four. Um, I have Lashley winning at five for no particular reason. I think. The one thing that will save this is the idea of Leo Rush, even though he's not in the match, being in a ladder match scenario. Because I think he might do something cool, which doesn't make any sense, because he's supposed to be the heel. We shouldn't be cheering him, therefore he shouldn't be doing cool shit. Like, we've seen time and again, like, the high-flying guys, when they turn heel, they automatically go to a more boring ground, ground-based... ground um... Because high-flying stuff is fun. Yeah, we're not supposed to have fun in WWE, haven't you heard? Oh, did you yes. hear? Uh, after this show, Vince McMahon is showing up on Raw next week. He's cool. gonna he's gonna piss on somebody. Again. Um, want to talk about matches that should have been ladder matches? Triple threat match for the SmackDown Tag Team titles. New Day, Usos, Bar. Tell me this would they not have... Haven't, they haven't known what to do with the SmackDown title in fucking... For, in the SmackDown Tag Team titles in forever. But you know what, though? Honestly, and maybe I'm... Maybe I mean, I... if you're... If you're if, unless you're paying attention, you would think SmackDown only has three fucking tag teams. Oh, well, they do. I, 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 maybe I'm being a bad wrestling fan when I say this. This one doesn't bug me so much. 
because, I mean, Usos, New Day, and fill-in-the-blank has proven to be a winning formula. Well, I mean, it's going to be a pretty good match, but I'm just... Aren't people getting sick and tired of seeing this match over and over and over? See, that, that that's what I mean, though. Like, the repetitiveness of WWE does bother me. This is one of the least examples of that. Like, I could watch Usos and New Day fight every week, and I really don't care. Like, maybe that's bad. Maybe that's me setting a shitty, horrible example as a fan. But those two teams just work. And you get these trifectas, right? Like, obviously, in, back in the day, you had Edge Christian, the Hardys, and the Dudleys. NXT two years ago had DIY Revival and Authors of Pain. Look, look at where the Authors of Pain are now. Um, I think they're looking for that third team to go along with Usos and New Day. And I think it's going to be the bar. Because before the bar, I think you had... Um, uh, who was it? The Bludgeon Brothers? And then Rowan got hurt again, and we haven't seen them since. Um, if the Bar are going to be that third team, it's fine. It's 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 fine because you've got the New Day that are there, and they don't have to win because they're fun. Um, the Bar are there to be the like definitive bad guy team. And I'm sorry, across all of main roster WWE, like the Prestige... Uh, the prestige tag team on any of main roster WWE is the Usos. So I'm going with the Usos. Uh, I've got the Usos at eight. Uh, I think I have the bar retaining at four. I don't know. Usos are, as we, and we always used to say, like, Usos back in the day with the face paint and the colorful shorts and all that, like, we got sick of them real quick. Ever since they snapped out of that, as I say, like, even if they, even if tomorrow you brought up a team like DIY or, or, or somebody like that that we absolutely love from NXT, I would still say put belts on the Usos. Because they're the one team that I don't think we can ever break up. Like, New Day could break up and do some other stuff, and, like, they could get some, like, mid-card titles or whatever. You know, Seamus Cesaro could experiment with breaking up and whatever. Usos are that one, like, quintessential WWE tag team that you don't think about them breaking up. You don't want them to break up because a tag team is what they are. And there's something about that that I'm sorry none of the other teams have. On Raw, on SmackDown, on NXT, on NXT UK. Um, I know 205 Live has some thrown together tag teams as well. Usos is the only true team team that they have. Unless you can think of somebody else. Nope. Alright. Anyways, you got the bar retaining, so maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. Usos took the the rap battle segment on SmackDown that should have been absolute garbage and made it fun. And didn't sound like they were out there to be comical. Um, let me introduce you to my friend the Turnbuckle. Talking about uh, Cesaro's mashed up teeth was particularly good. Um, again, kind of like Drew and, and Balor, uh, one of the front runners to be match of the night, just because we know what these guys can do. Mm-hmm. Anyways, moving on. Okay. Talk about a match that has a lot of opinions behind it. Ronda Rousey versus the hashtag face breaker Nia Jax. Can we not? Can we not? Well, I mean, uh, I also watch What Culture, and I am with Simon Miller when it when it comes to why why did she have to scream into the mic? Nobody <laughs> nobody wants that. Why are you screaming at me through the TV? Like nope, nobody needs that. <laughs> why does Nia Jax have a job? Nia why? Jax. Nia I'm not Jax. Even saying why. I'm not even saying why does she have a job. If she would just not scream into my fucking ear. When she cut her promo a couple weeks ago on what most people are calling the worst Raw ever, and she's cutting a promo on Ronda Rousey, 
Uh, and one of the things she said was, you know, we fought back at Money in the Bank, and Ronda Rousey hasn't been the same since. It's like, yeah, except she's undefeated, Ex- and she's yeah, fucked except up. Except that she is. And she's fucked up everybody, and she's the champion, and she's going to kill you. And she went to war with Charlotte Flair, and just, just like, go away. Um... Oh, I hate I hate to like tread over over um, material that we've already gone over, but like the people out there that are like, oh, you can't pick on her just because she's made a few mistakes. I mean, look at Seth Rollins, look at Sasha Banks. First of all, I think the rabid defenders of of Sasha Banks are a little like crazy too. Seth Rollins did what he did, also, and he also I don't also I don't think they've done it to multiple people. I was going to say, um, once again, I'm going to defer to what culture? Uh, Somebody on Twitter tried to list off all the people that she's injured, and they they couldn't fit it into a tweet, even with the extended characters. So, um, just the ones we know about, right? I mean, you start off with all four horsewomen and Asuka. I mean, she almost broke Charlotte's neck twice, almost broke Asuka's neck twice, tore up all the muscle in Bailey's shoulder, put Sasha Banks on the shelf for two months with quote-unquote undisclosed injuries. We all know what she did to Becky Lynch's face. She also gave, uh, what's her name, Zelina Vega a concussion by landing on her head uh, in the Evolution Battle Royal. Um, I believe she was one of the people who, like, okay, there was multiple incidences that led to Alexa Bliss's current concussion, and I think she was involved in that. And those are the ones we know about. And then we saw the diatribe on Twitter from Ember Moon's husband about, oh my god, my my wife has to be in the main event with that unsafe moron, I hope she doesn't hurt her. Which is only an indicator of the fact that the the injuries that we know about may only be the tip of the iceberg. So it's not like, uh, well, you know, Seth Rollins hurt one or two people, Sasha Banks hurt, like, one or two people. This, like, Nia Jax, in a scary short amount of time, has a laundry list. And no, as much as I would love to say yes, because I just don't care and I want her off my TV, no, she shouldn't be fired for that. But she shouldn't be rewarded either, and she is. And it's fucking disgusting. I mean, you, you said everything I wanted to say. <laughs> like, I the, just... Like, I don't we, think she should be fired. People that, but... I, I do feel like she just needs more time. Like, she needed more time to train. Or whatever. And the thing is, like, the here's the catch-22 of people, it, though. And people will say, you know... Shit happens. It does. Shit happens. They're they're doing all these moves and jumping off of, you know, and landing on each other. Like wrestling is is a contact sport, basically. But okay, but see, so, here, you know, here's my point. Look, I, I I have to I have to counteract though that though I really do because you and I I think collectively if I if I can sit and and pat ourselves on the back for a second you and I have gone out of our way in the past to get, do our best to give Nia Jax the benefit of the doubt. Like, no, she's not great, but WWE's booking her like the big show. No, she's not great, but but WWE books her like a fat chick, which they do, and that's not fair. But her moveset isn't exactly high risk. She's not exactly doing 450s off the top rope, thank fucking God. Yes. But, but back to my earlier point, you know, everybody jumped all over Brie Bella when Liv Morgan gets a concussion, you know. Shit happens, but there's not this long string of injuries around Brie Bella. There's not this long string of injuries, you know, to other wrestlers, mostly to herself, uh, with Sasha Banks. <laughs> I mean, you know, I love Sasha Banks, but let's be real. <laughs> let's let's, a, let's be real. Her, her her defenders are a little psychotic. <laughs> Sa- Sasha Banks' uh, uh, long stream of people she's hurt are excluded exclude to just herself, really. Yeah, I mean, the, but, page, the page thing was unfortunate, but, like... 
shit happens. It 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 does. And Paige has been Paige had neck issues for fucking ever before. Yeah. The the the, the defense has been made that she shouldn't have been back in the ring to begin with, which is fine. And I get it. Like even even as pissed and we're we're gonna go off on the same diatribe that I think we went off on last month. Even as pissed as everybody was about Becky Lynch, because they ruined what could have been a, a big four pay per view. I main feel event. like that helped Becky Lynch in the long run. It did, but it, it it okay, but that's because there's a lot of comparisons being drawn between Becky Lynch and Stone Cold Steve Austin, who got a lot of similar shit. But like, as pissed well, off. I'll- as pissed oh, off as we were about that, as much as they ruined what could have been a key point of the year for that, if that was an isolated incident, as 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 fucked up as it was, and as judgmental as we would probably be, the whole idea of, okay, shit happens, would have eventually risen to the top. And I, I'd like to think that we would be where we were at the beginning of the year, and we would still be trying to give her the benefit of the doubt. Okay, we don't like her, but it's not the end of the world. But the whole the whole mentality of shit happens has to have an end point. Like I mean, what once you see basically the body count it, like, it literally it is. Get, and and I I don't want to say it's her fault. I I put it squarely on WWE because clearly she just hasn't I don't know if she hasn't had enough training or what it is. Cle- clearly she's not doing it on purpose, but there's something. There's something wrong with this. Mm-hmm. There's something wrong with this. And here's and... Here, here's the catch twenty two of it though, right? Where do people go to learn? Uh, In WWE, the perform- the NXT, the Performance Center. See, and the the whole thing is because people are such a fan of their developmental brand, the reaction of, well, you know, we'll just put her back down in NXT. The NXT crowd will will eat that alive. The NXT crowd I'm not will even hate saying that. Put her in NXT. Clearly we all know clearly NXT is more than the de- developmental brand now. That's what yeah. it was at first. It was the developmental brand. Uh, it is now a way to It's the get fi- it's the filter brand. It's a th- it's a third brand basically. Yeah. But it is the brand that they use to be like, well, let's see how you're going to flush out in front of, a, not only in front of a WWE crowd, but specifically in a WWE style of wrestling, yeah. which is a different style of wrestling than what indie wrestling is. Can you wrestle this? It's not, it's like they have a higher wrestling schedule than they did in the indies, but it's yeah. not quite as. Their schedule isn't quite as full as if they were on the main roster. So it's a really good stepping stone, especially for these indie guys, to do all the shit they want to do, but see how it's going to fit in a WWE schedule. I mean, because let's be honest. I mean, I love Finn Balor and all and all these indie guys, but how many of these indie guys have like gotten really hurt? doing this WWE style wrestling because they're not used to wrestling this often. Yep. Well, literally, so, we, we, okay, we, we, we've got, talked about... Track. Yeah, she we've talked about the uh, Mixed Match saying, Challenge. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not saying send her back to, like, NXT because clearly NXT is not just the developmental brand anymore, but she needs to be training more just training more and yeah. i mean i'm not saying i mean she probably is i would hope wwe sees this sees the string of injuries and are like well you, you might need some to do to be doing some more work but she clearly needs more training but you see that and, and therein lies my point though right like if there was some sort of, like the message of hey you this needs to change you need to do some work doesn't work when her biggest mistake to date is has led to her biggest fictional push, and that's and that's that's not the main problem, but it's one that's it's one that's really glaring to me. As you say, I don't think anybody's. Av- I mean, unless you're an asshole, like nobody's advocating for this girl to be tossed out on the street. Like I, I really don't think we're there. Like I don't want to see her personally. I don't want to see her on my TV. But I don't. You know, you got to go pretty hard before you wish somebody to be out of a job. But. 
the fact that this big mistake that she's done, this big glaring example of her unsafe nature is getting her TV time, is getting her rewarded, it's hard for anything else they do after that to feel like a repercussion when what got her in this spotlight was fucking up and literally breaking somebody's face. Like, the negative... Or, sorry, the positive reinforcement of a negative incident is, is absolutely fucking backwards. Like, she has a title match on Sunday. I think she was always going to have a title she, match on Sunday, uh... whether she broke Becky Lynch's nose or not. Yeah, well, she won the Battle Royal at... At uh, Evolution. at Evolution, which is which was a dumb move in and of itself, because listen to how fucking over Oscar and Ember Moon were in that match. But that aside, you want to say, okay, this is this, but we need to pull you back, and da 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 da. It's very easy to put your number one contendership on the line in some random match on Raw, just give it to somebody else, you know, in a, in a quick one off, like have her have her lose to Mickey James because Alexa Bliss is the female GM right now and stack the deck and Roddy Roddy Ra and Mickey James gets a win and Mickey James has some random squash match on this coming Sunday with Ronda Rousey but it, it represents the fact that if you are fucking up this much you don't get mainstream exposure with a mainstream star like Ronda Rousey for fucking up that hard like it's I'm sorry I, I sound like I'm drilling down on it and I'm harping on it but it's it is the biggest glaring thing to me right now. In all the things that are glaring in WWE right now, the fact that there is any positive reinforcement of what Nia Jax has been doing recently, is, is that's it. Anyways, I got Ronda at 12. <laughs> I have Nia Jax at 10 just because I have heard rumors that oh, they Christ. are taking the belt off of Ronda to start this feud with Charlotte. <sighs> That is what I have heard. That's so bad. <laughs> the only I mean, I'm not saying the, I agree with it, but the that's only, what I've heard. The only way I will accept that is if it's an if it's a reversal of what we think is going to happen to the Royal Rumble because everybody right now thinks that Becky Lynch drops the belt, goes wins the Rumble, faces Ronda at Mania. If we want to do the reverse of that, Becky keeps her title, Ronda drops hers, Ronda wins the Royal Rumble, goes on to face Becky Lynch as a SmackDown competitor, because supposedly Fox wants Ronda on SmackDown in 2019, that I'll deal with. But even still, the Raw title... I did a fantasy booking a while ago where we ended up with WrestleMania as Ember Moon versus Becky... Or, or sorry, Ember Moon versus Alexa Bliss for the Raw title... Ronda versus Becky for the SmackDown title, and Charlotte Flair versus Asuka too, just as a rematch from last year. But Nia Jax should not factor into any of that. Fuck that noise. That is what I've heard. Yeah. Uh, the 10 is, again, not any sort of how sure I am of that. It's just what I've heard, and also that's what number it ended up with. Because yeah. fuck it, we're just throwing shit against the wall. Okay. Another match that could potentially not happen. Braun Strowman versus Baron Corbin in a TLC match with a lot of stipulations on the line. If Braun Strowman wins, he gets a shot at Brock Lesnar at the Royal Rumble. If Baron Corbin wins, he becomes the permanent general manager of Raw. First of all, why are they wasting the actual TLC match of the TLC pay-per-view on these two guys? Uh, the one of the women's matches is gonna be a TLC match. Yeah, but this is not the Raw main event. It's not. Uh. They want it to be, but it's not. <laughs> Just because you don't think it is doesn't mean it isn't. Fine. Down. Okay. Fight me. Find anybody, anybody listening to the sound of my voice right now, anybody listening to this podcast right now, if you honestly believe that Baron Corbin versus Braun Strowman for a title shot slash GM job in a TLC match between two big lugs, for lack of a better term, if you honestly believe that is the raw main event for this pay-per-view, put it down in the box below. Fight me. Prove me wrong. 
I I can't even muster up that level of enthusiasm. <laughs> Uh, in the words of Michael Sidgwick, again, Wrestle Culture, a lot of shouts out to them tonight. He um, he's probably more disgusted by wrestling than I ever have been, and he basically he basically ended off their review of uh, of the quote unquote worst draw ever. He and he basically said, "I've coined this as the so bad it's good era." Fight me, <laughs> and uh, it's hard to argue. I mean, there's some good shit in there, but. It's hard to argue. I have a theory, but I'm going to let you go first. Okay. About? I have a theory about this match. I will, I, but about I, but I, Corbin and Braun Strowman? Yes. Well, I have Corbin winning it, too, and, I mean, the only reason I have it at that is because of, uh, you know, because... It might not happen. <laughs> It might not happen, so it, it got a two. Um, out of all the matches, this is the match I care the least about. Which is pretty bad when you consider the fictional stakes involved. Like, in theory, the semi-main event of Royal Rumble is on the line here. In theory, the... Okay, and it's laughable, but in theory, the running of Monday Night Raw is on the line here. So it should be, if you if you purely live in kayfabe, this should be the most important match. But it's just not. <laughs> Anyways. Any, any thoughts as to why, other than the fact that it might not happen? <laughs> I mean, no. I don't, I have nothing. This, out of all the matches, this is the match I nothing the most. Okay. So I have a theory. They okay. they did the injury Shoot. angle. They did the injury angle with Braun Strowman uh, a couple of weeks ago to cover up for the fact that he's legitimately going in for elbow surgery. They don't know whether he's going to be good to go or not. Baron Corbin the whole time has been playing up the whole. Well, I'm going to win by forfeit because he's not even going to show up. Um, I think they're going to play it up that he's not able to fight that he almost has to forfeit, but then there's going to be some interference because it's a no disqualification match. Now, if you go back a couple of weeks, while he was talking all this shit about Braun Strowman, he was also talking about the fact that it was inevitable that he was going to be the full-time runner of Raw and everybody on the roster needs to be on the right or the wrong side of history. And you started seeing people stand up for each other like, like, okay, and we, yeah, WWE does the thing where, like, all the baby faces are friends, all the heels are friends, but you started having people that really had nothing to do with each other sticking up for each other. Like, uh, Balor saved Elias, Elias saved Balor, I think, uh, even, like, Apollo Crews came in and tried to help the other two guys, even though he has nothing to do with them. Ziggler finds himself on the other side of the fence now. So I think you have, like, uh, like a... I don't want to say a revolution, because that sounds corny, but you have this group of people that are decidedly not a together group, but you just have, like, the good side of the roster sort of muster behind Braun Strowman and, like, tear the ever-loving fuck out of him. And Strowman's able to, like, drag himself in there as as they give him the win, because it's the right thing to do. I think that's how you have a guy that's not fit to wrestle without having to cancel the match and still tell somewhat of a, of a strong, like, an uprising story. I would like to see that. I would like to see Corbin, or sorry, Strowman comes out. He, he's all bandaged up. Maybe his arm's still in a sling. We saw him on Raw, you know, live from the doctor's office, so to speak, and his arm's all black and blue. You see him come down with his arm all tied up, and as pissed off as he is, he knows he has to have to forfeit. And then you just see, like, person after... Like, started off with somebody, like, low on the totem pole, like, um... Like, uh, Apollo Crews. And then you see Balor come out, whether he's won or lost his match with McIntyre. And then you see Elias come out, whether he's won or lost his match with Lashley. You see Ziggler come out, you know, hey, I, I bet you all forgot about me, but, like, fuck yourself. Uh, and they just, like, 
they absolutely maul him like this cancer that has to be taken out of of office so to speak i think they're going to do i don't think they're going to do all of that i think there's going to be something like that that happens some shenanigans some shenanigans but like corbin's own words basically coming back to haunt him like the roster has to decide what side they're on like draw a line down the center of the roster and whoever the good guys quote unquote are they just come out and they swarm and there's maybe there's a brawl maybe mcintyre and lashley come out to like back up the boss that they think is going to help them fuckery and Strowman somehow comes out that way uh because i don't think at this point they have anybody else lined up for lesnar uh i would love to see it be mcintyre versus lesnar but i'm thinking that might be the story at mania so there has to be fuckery uh but yeah you got uh corbin at two i got Strowman at six wwe title match for smackdown daniel bryan versus aj styles they they really fucked aj styles on this one at least it's going to be a great match. It's going to be a great match. And you know what? But right now, they're not advertising a great match. They're advertising that Daniel Bryan is the champion, and Daniel Bryan has a match on Sunday. And AJ Styles is kind of an afterthought, and that bugs me, because I'm a fan also, of AJ Styles. as much of a great match as it is, and as much as, especially, uh, we talk about what culture a lot, uh, is like praising the shit out of all of this. Really, Daniel Bryan is uh, a heel because he believes in climate change mm-hmm. and and loves the environment so much, mm-hmm. and that makes him a heel. Mm-hmm. He's, really? He slapped Mustafa Ali for, for driving an SUV. And, and he's supposed to be the bad guy. Because... And I get it. Like, I mean, it, this is the same company that has Donald Trump in the Hall of Fame. I mean, I didn't say that. I didn't wow, make it. Wow. Wow. Mono- Monoxide's uh, going to bug you about that one. Don't, don't even. Not <laughs> with him. I can't deal with him right now. I don't even his Trump bullshit. Like, I can't. He doesn't just derail me up. But because, you know what it is, though? It, it does acknowledge something that, okay, okay, and I'm not going to get super political either, but it's the same as when Alexa Bliss... I'm, sa- I'm not saying that that's why Daniel Bryan is a heel, okay? No. I'm being stupid. I'm being silly. But it's it's like when Alexa Bliss but was... But it's still a stupid reason to be heel. Right. Well, no, he's a heel because he wanted to be champion, and he's trying to justify booting somebody in the dick. Where, realistically, at this point, the fact that AJ Styles doesn't wear a cup is because he's a moron. Like, (laughs) AJ Styles... He has been... been, I guess maybe he's trying to save money on that vasectomy, so he doesn't have any more kids. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. is that what AJ Styles is doing? He doesn't need any more children, so he's just like, I don't really want to go in for that vasectomy. I'll just get people to punch me in the dick at work. I just have this this vision of AJ Styles going home to his wife, like, on his off week, and she's like, honey, how was work? And he's like, they keep kicking me in the dick. <laughs> like, he hasn't had this conversation with his wife. She wants to have more kids. He's He's like, we've had enough kids, but she's not ready to not have kids anymore so instead of just having the adult conversation about how he doesn't want to have kids he just gets punched in the dick at work and then when he can't have kids he's like oh darn it see it's wwe's fault that we can't have any more kids in in the immortal words of adam wilborn wendy get him a cup it's really a gift for yourself Oh fuck! I can't stand the Daniel Bryan thing, but it's I do get it because you're talking about like oh why would an environmentalist be a heel? It's the same as Alexa Bliss doing the moments of bliss, like because she's out there totally bullshitting that she's a victim to represent the real people out there that absolutely bullshit that they're a victim. <clears throat> Me too. Um, 
same thing with somebody like an environmentalist. Like, environmentalists, on the surface, are, are, are a great good thing, but there are people that are absolutely obnoxious about it. It's the same thing as when he was a vegan, and that was his heel thing, because there are people that are obnoxious about that. CM Punk being a heel, straight-edge person. Uh, fine, be straight-edge, don't have a drink, more vodka for me. Um, just don't be obnoxious about it. And it's like, there's a difference between being an advocate and being an asshole. And... Uh, the real world doesn't really realize that, but I think WWE does, and I think that being a heel thing isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's just, I, like, I'm at the point now with people, anybody that follows me on Facebook knows my opinion on most of these, like, quasi-controversial issues. Most people choose not to take me up on it, but it's like, I deal with these assholes in real life on, on various topics, and, you know, from... Anything from from politics to world issues to like us doing our big video on everything surrounding Crown Jewel, um, everybody wants to be victimized by somebody by something. Everybody wants to feel like they're superior because they do or don't do something. That's a little too close to uh, the real the real problems with the world, I guess. And it's people that I'm sick of in real life, and I I don't want that in my wrestling and it just caps off with the fact that like they made Daniel Bryan the champion in the most unceremonial way on a random smackdown and in the process they made AJ Styles his entire title run a joke and even in his rematch he's a non-factor in a match that he's in like there's nothing good about this match that's probably going to be great and that pisses me off I was gonna say, at least it'll be a good match. Yeah, but that's that 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 is the piss off. There is absolutely nothing good about what's going to be a great match. I, <clears throat> what's your opinion? Who I got do you have I got Brian at ten. Uh, I have Brian at uh, at eight. Did you really save the IC title for the end? Uh, nope. There's two more matches to talk about. What other match do I have? The main oh, event. Oh, yeah, never mind. There, there, there we There's go. two more matches. I missed it. Sorry. No, I don't know. Depending so on d- depending on how far they go with this new, this new Daniel Bryan thing, I'm going to go back to being as frustrated as I was with the WrestleMania 30 bullshit. WrestleMania 30 was bullshit. Don't at me. Um, yeah, I see title. Seth Rollins versus uh, Bane Ambrose. I, I, what I, are they I, doing with Dean Ambrose? I, I feel like you have thoughts, so I'm going to let you go. <laughs> what? what are they doing? Like, okay, yeah, his thing was, he could have had a perfectly fine gimmick where he's like, the shield is holding me back. That's why I did all the shit I did. That is a perfectly fine gimmick where he's like, I'm going to do my own shit. Why is it? That he has to be like essentially germophobic. See, and here's where why? Why does he have to be a germaphobe? See, I, I think he and... thinks he's going to get a disease from the audience. See, here's and where I mean, here's where I want to give Hang Dean on. Ambrose what credit. What sucks more is that his the way he's doing the gimmick is almost fucking believable to me. He's almost selling me on it on a gimmick that is stupid and not stupid in a good way like stupid in a i hate this why are we doing this way i don't want to stop trying to sell me on this gimmick it's stupid no i'm not going to sell you on the gimmick as it is i'm going to sell you on the gimmick as it was supposed to be Right, um, because well, I mean, okay, I don't care what it was supposed to be. Well, I, 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 I do in a sense because it's a perfect example of how WWE takes great shit and ruins it. So I want to make sure Ambrose gets the credit that he deserves while we give shit to the well, WWE. No, he's trying, he's trying, yeah. And like I said, it's almost making me like it, but I don't want to like this stupid gimmick. The only but, reason why it's even in that sort of might be, I might like it category is because Dean Ambrose is doing it. If anybody else was doing it, it would not be this. Mm. But apparently, and this is only from what I've heard, and again, we're going to go back to the uh, 
to the theme of of what culture once again. And I think this was pointed out by Michael Hamlet. Apparently, the I, the whole idea, not in a literal sense, because WWE is way too literal, but w, uh, that Dean Ambrose is so disgusted by the fans, not that he literally thinks he's going to be sick because of them, but be, the, the fact that he sees the fandom as a disease. He sees wanting to please these people as a disease. That's why Roman Reigns got leukemia. That's the terrible part of it. But that's the edgy way, like, this okay... The, by the way, this is the other uh, feud that just feels a little icky, where you're yeah. like, I know probably everybody's fine with it, but yeah. it just feels wrong. <laughs> right. But it's, it's one of those, like, okay, if you're going to use it, like, and, okay, w- putting aside whether that's right or wrong, because I don't know what I quite think about it either. But if you are going to use it, and he wants to be the absolute asshole that says, you know, wanting to be a good guy and appease these diseased fa- you know, wanting to, like, treating the fandom like they're a disease, treating other babyface wrestlers like wanting to please the fans is a disease. Look what happened to Roman Reigns. Ooh, there's the big dig. Look at what's going to happen to Rollins. Like, you're diseased now. I'm, I'm going to, you know, rid you of, of your disease by ridding you of your title and showing you what we were supposed to be. Like, the S.H.I.E.L.D., when they initially came in, they were a heel group. They did what they wanted, they got, they took what they wanted, they were successful, because they didn't give a shit about anybody. And he's got this whole, like, you know, the fans are a disease, and his his former brothers have been caught up in that disease, and all that, like, all that metaphorical good shit that you could do in a really good Dean Ambrose promo. And in the words of, of Michael Hamlet, Vince McMahon heard the word disease and said, oh, he's going to get sick. Let's give him a shot in the ass. Let's have him go out there in a gas mask. Although I will say, as as much as I want to say it's cheesy, the whole entrance that he had with the, with the whole fucking SWAT team in the masks and doing the mask promo and having the whole air raid siren, like the whole, like, um, uh, what's it called? Emergency service siren going over his own entrance. I did like there was something to like about that because he pulled it off but it's i think there was a metaphor there for the fans not not being sick not carrying disease but like the fans being a disease that would have been good if it wasn't wwe that's why i that's why i give it a little bit of a pass you want to look at whether whether using Roman Reigns as a, as a flashpoint for this feud is a good thing or a bad thing. That's a debate we can have all day, realistically. Um, it's not the same as Natty in the sense that Roman Reigns isn't dead. You can find out from the source whether he's okay with it or not. And uh, I know you watch Simon Miller. Um, to his point, if the people directly involved with it are okay... It's not for us to tell them that they shouldn't be okay with it. But if you put the right or wrong question aside, I think what Ambrose is trying to put off has something to it. The match will be good. I don't I don't think he's going to win because I think Rollins is sort of like their substitute guy at the moment because they don't really have a main guy. And I got Rollins at nine. Um, I have, uh, I also, I have also, no, no, I also have Rollins, but I have him at 11. Okay. But I mean, what do you then do with Dean Ambrose after this? I don't know. And this is the problem with Dean Ambrose. Like, Rollins can leave this feud and go feud with anybody. Dean Ambrose's whole identity right now is he's the guy that turned on the shield so anybody he fights that's not from the shield it's hard to care about rollins can go fight anybody rollins can have another open challenge which is great uh i like like we said before about some of the cruiserweight guys i'd love to see like a buddy murphy or a or a or a cedric alexander or even like a noam dar or somebody take him up on the open challenge maybe that turns into something because Rollins has his hands in a lot of pies. Ambrose came back to be his partner, came back to be in a group with Roman, um, lost Roman, and then turned his back on his partner. And, like, he hasn't done anything outside of outside of the shield since coming back. 
Um, I almost forgot about this. Um, and and it kind of makes me laugh because this is something I kind of thought of right off right off the uh, cuff when this match was first announced. What if only because they keep involving her and it's weird? What if in the middle of this match, Renee Young gets up out of the commentators' table, walks into the ring, and just like punches Rollins in the dick? That won't happen. She's too she's too marketable for WWE right now. But they're hammering her a lot. Like every week, like somebody says something about like, well, what don't don't you know what's going on with your husband and whatever? Like the stuff. I mean, her and Corey Graves are great. Like they've been great together since like NXT. And 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 this whole there's this whole well like everybody knows you guys are married. Like what the fuck's up? Like and she's to the point where she's like telling them off, like telling them to fuck off. So I feel like. As much as WWE hammers everything, I don't think they would be hammering it quite this way if it wasn't going to be something eventually. And we're not going to get a match between Renee Young and Corey Graves. So... Yes, we will. Renee Young and Corey Graves have a match. Oh, good lord. Actually, if you've been following Twitter, I kind of want to see Corey Graves versus Becky Lynch. Becky Lynch just destroyed Corey Graves on Twitter. Something to the effect of, "Yeah, you, you, you. I did. I saw. I did see that. That was that was a really good tweet where he, where he she said something about I'm making history. You're just there to be to see when I do it, kind of thing. I'm making history, and you're just here to talk about it. And you just stay at the table and be Bobby Heenan light. Yeah, that was it. Oh." Becky's Twitter game is on point. Oh my Christ! Yeah, friggin' let's, let's o- just o- move into that. Owens is gone, and and Becky just like took his spot. <laughs> like, goddamn. She is just vicious on Twitter. Like a couple like, weeks in a ago. Good way. A couple weeks ago, it was it was mentioned to me like somehow via Twitter, the match I want to see at WrestleMania now is Becky Lynch versus Seth Rollins. <laughs> because of Twitter. You know what? And I, I'm going to say this for what it's worth. Unless your name is Naomi, people are getting over more on Twitter than they are on the show. Naomi's uh, Naomi's Twitter game we... Naomi's Twitter game consists of telling Mandy Rose, "Your discount Eva Marie." Oh, oh, did I mention your discount Eva Marie? Oh, 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 I you're 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 kind of like Eva Marie. Fuck off. There's another one that shouldn't have a job, but that's another story for another day. Spaz, Spaz's hatred aside. Oh, haven't you heard? I'm totally racist. Uh, <laughs> I mean, that's what I hear. I wasn't going to say it to your face, but... Well, you're not saying it to my face. You're saying it to my earphone. Why Why do you... Why are you like this? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, oh, man. Becky Lynch versus Asuka versus Charlotte. <laughs> Now, I this mean, is going to be a great match. I mean, what can you say about this? This is a match that I really don't have any very clear ideas on what is going to happen, what they're going to do. Uh, there's a lot of this saying they're going to give it to Charlotte. Uh, I don't know what I want from this match. Uh, I don't Asuka, want them. To, I don't want them to give rare, it to Oscar. On a rare thing, I don't feel like uh, you know. I think Oscar's the third wheel. I don't think she's the third wheel. I think Oscar's going to be the champion. I just don't think it should happen this Sunday. My my fantasy booking that works out to be Alexa Bliss versus Ember Moon for the Raw title isn't going to happen. I, I I'm fully comfortable with the fact that it's not going to happen. Um. I don't think Becky wins this, which is fine, because then it frees her up for the Rumble, and she gets her hands on Ronda. Um, I don't think Asuka wins tonight, because I think you're going to get... If they do Charlotte Asuka 2 at WrestleMania, I would rather have Asuka's first title win happen there, because her picking up the title here and just defending it at WrestleMania isn't as good as her getting it at WrestleMania. And I think that's a really cool story to tell. Like, 
sort of lost her streak last year, sort of went on a downward spiral, came back up, rode the wave of the fan momentum back into WrestleMania to take back what should have happened last year and get the title in the process. That's a great story. But it's a weird sort of thing because, and I mean, you, you could say the same thing for Rollins in the last match, too. Like, we, we could say Rollins should lose the belt for the greater good because it frees him up for a possibly a universal title scenario, right? This one, I'm almost sure Becky Lynch is going to lose the title, and I want her to lose the title only for the, only for the sake of something better in a month from now. See, I have... I don't know, because it depends on... Because, I, I mean, I've heard from the get-go that the storyline is Flair versus Rousey. At Mania. At Mania. See, I hate that. I do. That's what I've heard. And so, I mean, right now I have Charlotte Flair winning the title. Yep. At, and I have it at 12, but for some reason, I, again, Spaz can attest to this as true. When I got to the end of my booking and I was like, yeah, I don't really want to make this one my 12, but fuck it. It's 12 yep. now. I am not 12 sure on this. It was literally like the last number I had. Okay. Um, I, I've got Charlotte at 11. I really don't. I have, like I said, I have Charlotte at 12, but I, I really don't, I, I don't, it. Because I think, I think, I think it's how you get all the great things. I think it's how you get all the great things. Charlotte winning this Sunday helps everybody but Charlotte. Because it sets up Asuka for a WrestleMania title win. It sets up Becky for that Royal Rumble win. Um... I think a couple things are going to happen. I think if Becky is going to win the Royal Rumble, which we all assume is going to happen, but it's still an if, I think if she wins the Royal Rumble, then two years straight, I think the Women's Royal Rumble is the main event, which is fine. And I think if they're talking about having the first ever women's main event at WrestleMania, you have two very different stories that could happen there because i think if you do ronda versus charlotte at mania it gets pushed as well we put the women in the main event because the women deserve to be in the main event whereas if it's becky i think you get more the narrative of becky got herself the main event and i think that's a lot stronger than just saying well we need to put the division there so let's just do it like I Becky, mean, that sounds as good a reason as any to me. But I mean, like, Becky Lynch is... When we had the big... I think it was, like, the tail end of 2016 into... Or, sorry, tail end of 2017 into 2018. And we had that big, long run of Charlotte versus Sasha on Raw. And you had them doing everything. You had them doing the Iron Woman match in the main event. You had them doing the Hell in the Cell match in the main event. Just because they, they wanted to say... You know, women can do it too. And they were really pushing the, you know, I hate to say it like this, and please nobody be offended by this, but they were pushing sort of the ladies' agenda into the main event. Well, Becky, there's a Becky, lot of people that say the women's evolution is just a ploy. And, and it's been, but the way it's been presented, you can't really help that. The fact, the fact of, um, you know, like shrieking. Uh, Stephanie McMahon ha- isn't on SmackDown. So you don't have her in the background of everything, pushing it like it's an agenda. Like, um, Charlotte versus Asuka, the rematch from WrestleMania, happened this week on SmackDown, and it was in the main event. Nobody sat there and lost their shit about it being the main event. It just was, and it just fit as the main event because it was the coolest match on the show. Like, that is better than somebody coming along and saying, look, the girls are in the main event. Look, look, these ladies are in the main event. Isn't it great that we have ladies in the main event? Where the the thing should be, look at how fucking over Becky Lynch is. Isn't it great to see her finally in the spot that she deserves to be in? Like, it's two very different messages. Like, you don't want to say, oh, look, the women are in the main event, because then it just looks like, okay, Becky Lynch is in the main event because she has a vagina. 
which is so fucking backwards from what it should be. Like, you should be in the main event because you're the main event. And realistically, who's more over in WWE right now than Becky Lynch? Uh, men or women. Well, that's what, that's what I'm saying. Overall, like, like, there isn't. Like, if you go to the UK show and Pete Dunne comes out, and it's just the UK division, and you see Pete Dunne, maybe. Maybe. And I'm a little biased on that one, so whatever, it is what it is. But yeah, I'm in that weird spot of I'm really behind Becky, but I need her to lose so that she can get other cool stuff. So Charlotte, and like I say, Asuka, it's one of those things where like your first title is a little more important than the rest. So if she's going to get her first title win, I'd rather she pick it up at Mania than here. Because we're in, like I say, we're sort of in that dead time. And you want to you wanna have that first win when everybody's watching. And, you know, the cliche goes, like, when the lights are on their brightest, and that's WrestleMania. I mean, I don't have any better way to sum that up. I'm, I'm really excited about this match. I'm really, I'm torn because I don't, because I like Becky as champion, but they've made her face now, and that hasn't made the character, like, me not want to see the character at all. See, I don't think I don't think she's particularly face. I just thought I just think they've stopped trying to tell us that she's a heel. I much rather when they told us she was a heel because it I know and it's very cliche because everybody's saying it right now. But it came off very stone cold heel and but nobody wants her, to boo her. Exactly, it came off as when Stone Cold when they try to make Stone Cold. Uh, heel and nobody would boo him because they thought it was fucking awesome what he was doing just like we do with her but you know I do want well it's it's, it's it's the difference I'm not, I would not be mad if if anybody run, if any of these women uh, had, had the title on them right. uh, I do agree with you that I feel like Asuka's first title win should be special yeah and uh, so I feel like that would be a disservice to have her win it at this. But, you know, you never know. I wouldn't yeah. be mad if she was champion. Yeah. Like, I think the difference with how they've presented Becky Lynch now, and as you're talking, I'm sort of, like, rethinking the way I think of it. There's a difference between WWE telling you, look at Becky Lynch, she doesn't give a shit. And look at Becky Lynch, she doesn't give a shit and therefore you shouldn't like her. Like, they've pulled that back, because they, they've realized that that's just, that's just not going to happen. I will say, um, part of the reason that I don't really want her to be pushed as a heel is the same reason that Daniel Bryan doesn't work as a heel, is kind of the same way that, um, that uh, Johnny Gargano in NXT doesn't work as a heel, because people love them too much. And it's not like them turning heel is like, oh my god, you've turned your back on us. Shame on you, shame on you. Uh, I think I used this example before talking about the Gargano turn. Nobody's going to hate Gargano. They just look at him like that really good friend you have that's going through a rough time right now. And, and that doesn't work when you're trying to get somebody booed. I, th- I think... Um, with, with Daniel, it's the same thing. Like He's out there screaming at the fans that they're fickle and they're cheering it. Like, Daniel Bryan is their their really good buddy down the road that's just going through a rough patch right now. Like, he just found out that his wife secretly eats steak behind his back or something. Like... <laughs> that would that would be the reason why he's flown off the handle. I'd, I'd give Brie Bella some meat. I'm just saying. Boo. <laughs> no, Spaz. You're better than this, Spaz. No, no I'm not. <laughs> I believe that you are better than that. Okay, I, I I am better than Ember Moon's husband. Have you not heard about Ember Moon's husband? I have not heard about Ember Moon's husband. The indie wrestler <laughs> whose who's ring gear says, I'm the king of the black women? I have not. I am, <laughs> nope, I have not heard about this. This is the same one that was like, my wife has to fight Nia Jax on Raw tonight. I hope that unsafe moron doesn't hurt her again. 
Well, it sounds like somebody's not getting a WWE contract anytime oh, soon. Oh, Christ. Uh, Let's wrap I'll... this up. I'm tired. Oh, come on. They can all... He can always go fight for All Elite Wrestling because, you know, they can do no wrong. Exactly. Yeah. That's what I've heard. Oh, I'm Christ. sorry. I'm going to post... I'm going to say this very unpopular opinion on your show. Go for it. Because fuck it. I don't <laughs> care. And I'll probably all agree. Elite, <laughs> all Elite Wrestling, the idea of it, as much as I want it to be like a good thing because competition is good, it feels like a bunch of dudes that are in a giant circle jerk that are like, oh, we're so awesome. Guys, we're not WWE. It means we're so fucking good. I That's think how I assume they right all now, masturbate. Right now, Cody Rhodes could like walk down the street and kick a bunch of puppies in the face, and there'd be some fans out there that would be like, well, yeah, but at least he's not one of Vince's boys anymore. Like, I assume, and, and I feel like, and I could be very wrong, because I don't know any of these people, but with how he, they are all being presented to me, in my mind, they uh, get hard on the idea of Vince being sad that he can't hire them. <laughs> <laughs> Vince McMahon's tears make them all... Okay, I'm stopping this narrative now, because it's going to a very <laughs> strange, dark place. Uh, let me just say something, alright? Okay. For for what it's worth, I have nothing against... I mean, people have always heard me on here talking about these guys, you know, Kenny the Beta and Fuck the Bucks and all this kind of shit, right? In all seriousness, I, I look at somebody like Cody Rhodes, I'm happy for the guy. I'm not going to all of a sudden start watching ROH in New Japan because he's there, but, you know, he left WWE because he thought it was the right thing to do for himself. And, and it was, basically. Oh, he made a huge name for himself. And as, as I say, like, in all seriousness, congratulations for him, right? But if you think WWE's crying because they can't get you back, right? Let me just say, Punk left. Cena, and nobody cares anymore. Cena's basically gone. Rock went to Hollywood. As as they as they tell Stone Cold all the time, whenever he talks about about the time that he took his ball and went home. Yep. Nobody's bigger than the company. But this was. I'm not even talking about like being bigger than the company because no, you're right. Nobody's bigger than the company. But this whole idea that well, they're not going to make it because they can't get me. This is this is my point. Punk left. Cena's basically gone. Rock went to Hollywood. Austin retired. Hogan went to the competition. Uh, you know, Bret Hart had to. Bret Hart had to retire. Shawn Michaels up until like a month ago <laughs> left the company. Um, they're still standing. That doesn't make them great. That doesn't mean that everything they do is wonderful. But the idea that one person not being there is going to take down... Like, everybody's like, oh, unless WWE gets Kenny Omega, they're doomed. Fuck off. Like... <laughs> I, know not, I know none of the guys are like... None of these guys are like this. But still, in my head, they're just like... They get off on the idea that Vince McMahon can't have them. And the thing is, too, like, the more realistic... For every, for every one of those guys that doesn't want a spot at Vince's table, there's a hundred other ones that do. I'm, I'm sorry, like... I'm the sorry, now I, just, now I just have in my head, oh, God, Vince McMahon's tears. <laughs> that is a horrifying <laughs> image in my head that I have. Right oh, before Christ. I go to bed. Yeah, be, I be, none of them are like. I I hope none of them are like that. I don't know why, but it's just there now. That's because they the only do, head. they only do, <laughs> they only do real classic traditional five star wrestling shows with penis druids. <laughs> I can't. Uh, I feel so bad. I make fun of it because the fans are like so like. Well, I've, I've said it. it. I've said it on my show before, like, and I've said it in conversation with you and Guapo before. I don't hate the Bucks. I don't hate Kenny Omega the little bit that I've seen him. I've gotten to see Marty Skrull live. I remember the Bucks when they were back in in TNA, and I like Cody Rhodes. Cody Rhodes made him made a gimmick like Stardust work, and that says something. When you get handed shitty gimmick after shitty gimmick after shitty, look at uh, Damian Sandow for example, right? 
I don't have anything against any of these guys. These guys are great. I've seen them in, in great scenarios, you know, the whole, the whole fucking gamut. I could give them all the credit in the world from an outsider's perspective. Their fans make me hate them. That's why I continue the joke. Yeah. I know it's going to piss some fan off. So one of those guys fans off. It's like the only the only thing even moderately comparable that I can think of in WWE is Sasha Banks. I have no problem with Sasha Banks. Like she's I don't think she's the best one in the company, but I think she's she's a lot of fun. She can get it done in the ring when she's given the chance to and she's done some really cool shit, some dangerous shit like we've talked about, but some great shit as well. She was a big name in NXT and she was one of the few that was able to take that name and parlay it onto the main roster. Her fans are obnoxious, and her fans make me not want to see her come out on my TV, and that's bad. And that's the same for you know the you know the the young schmucks and Kenny the Beta and uh, friggin' uh, what's his name, Skrull Bird Boy, whatever. And I mean Jericho's in that mix. And I I don't even know <laughs> like like Dad Bod Jericho Club. <laughs> Fuck me, like it is dad bod but... Jericho Club. I love Chris Jericho. But As damn. Just, but yeah. But damn. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just still Oh, <laughs> I, uh, I, I, uh, I was about to sleep with this horrifying image in my head. <laughs> I was about to make a joke about Big Cass, but he had a seizure. Please so don't. we, so we That's can't really cool. do it. No, no, no. Just about like before the seizure, like we saw him at an indie show, and he 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 was looking pretty dad bod ish too. And but then he had a seizure, so now that's not funny anymore. On 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 a serious tip though, on the big cast thing, like negative shout out to all the people that saw him having a seizure and decided to pull out their phones. Like that's not cool. The world is full of shitheads. Yep. They're the, they're, you know, the world is full of shitheads. Some of them being uh, the elite's fans. I'm sorry. Yep. And I also, I mean, I was the person that was like the all-in pay-per-view felt like a giant circle jerk, too. <laughs> and Spads had to be the one to tell me that I was wrong. That was a pretty good, that yep. was a pretty good pay-per-view. That it definitely was not a uh, circle jerk in nature. <laughs> that it came off pretty nice. So I'm glad for them. Yeah. And that's why I am like 95% sure that this fake image that I now have that I'm just going to perpetuate because it, it, maybe it'll piss some of those obnoxious fans off is wrong, but uh, Vince McMahon can't hire us. <laughs> We're so fucking awesome, guys. We're geniuses. We're fucking genius wrestling fans. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it takes a lot of that's advertising. I imagine... It oh, takes it takes a lot of advertising right. genius to put out a banner that basically says, "Come watch us. We're not WWE." <laughs> you guys, I know we're not in video. You guys lose something in the fact that you can't actually see me fake jerking it. <laughs> there's no there's no answer I can give to that that's appropriate. <laughs> As I'm just sorry. Absolutely my, my, not. Mo my mocking loses something without the gesture. I, I think we're all with you in spirit. Anyway, I think that's about the, the hallmark of this being the end. I'm going to bed and try to get this image that I've concocted for myself out of my head. Oh, dear. Ah, you said cock. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Uh, Go to bed. Okay. Sounds good to me. Tell them where to find you. Uh, you can find me on Twitter tweeting about random stuff uh, at Black Cat Feline. I've started using my Twitter as a way to just shout into the void whenever I'm uh, frustrated. So that's a fun new thing now. Uh, if you see my tweets at like two in the morning, um, you can see me on Instagram at black cat feline as mostly pictures of, uh, me at work or my nephews, my adorable, adorable nephews. And, uh, yeah, that's it. Are you, are you ever going to have a channel again? Should we send them to the channel? <laughs> no, hell no. Okay. <laughs> Maybe when I get to a place with like real internet. There you go. 
If you guys don't know, I Skype this from my phone because I have satellite internet because I live in the middle of nowhere and it's uh, laggy as shit. Yeah, don't tell don't tell them exactly where you live because didn't that go very badly for you before? Well, that was they could see my the background of like they could see like yeah back in the day when Deidre and I used to do uh, videos. Uh, there was a fan that was like, we're driving around and we like pull into Deidre's apartment complex and you can kind of like see the apartment complex. You don't see the name of the apartment complex or anything, but you can just, you can see what the outside of the buildings look like. And we had a fan be like, Hey, I reckon I know where that is because I live in Lubbock. And we're like, Oh fuck, no more outside photos now. Yeah. Guys, don't be creepy. And yeah, yeah come, come in for me. That's a little hollow. I get it. But you know, don't be creepy. <laughs> Practice what you preach, Spaz. Not at all. I was talking to somebody at work the other day uh, about if I ever had the chance with Alexa Bliss, I would be kind of like one of those firefighting airplanes. Well, on that note, I'm leaving, whether this show's over or not. And you guys know where to find me or else you wouldn't be here. I've been Spaz. She's been Kristen. We are your YWC Reality Check. Subscribe up there. Talk down there. Start a conversation. Keep all these conversations going. Put your picks down in the box below. There's no Twitter bonus this time around because I, I, I'm lazy. Uh, don't be a stranger. We'll talk to each and every last one of you later. But for right now, me and Kristen are tagging out. Bye, guys. Shame on you, Spaz. <laughs> Never. Don't try to come and break like me. Don't apologize.